Now, Britain was once seen as an engineering industrial powerhouse, the likes of Brunel, Telford and Stevenson paving the way for the rest of the world. Fast forward to modern times and all, I think it's fair to say, not looking quite so rosy. Recent failings, including the scrapping of High Speed 2's northern leg, which we covered extensively on this show after being billions of pounds over budget, as well as many other infrastructure projects regularly coming in and variably late, have now left us lagging behind some of our global neighbours. The big question, what needs to be done? Joining me to shine a light on why Britain needs to do more to encourage engineering minds is Dragon's Den star. Deborah Maiden. Deborah, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Now, do you think we're being a bit unfair there? That was my kind of take mm. on it, to characterise Britain as a once great engineering nation. No, you see, I do think you're being a bit unfair, because actually I do think there's an engineer. We start off as engineers. If you think about kids, you know, they're building things up and knocking things down and taking them apart and seeing how they're working. So I think we've all got, you know, this is the, 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 I, there's a competition that's been launched by the Royal Academy of Engineering, and it's about everyday engineering. So we've all got an engineer in us. Um, mm. So, so no, I, th I, th I think I think we've got a lot of talent. I guess the question is, how do we bring it out? That's the question about a lot of sectors. As you said there, today is National Engineering Day. Um, the Royal Society of Engineers have got you on board to help with this initiative, which is about kind of exploiting or exploring or getting people to realise that they've got hidden engineering talent, right? Absolutely. I mean, how has that come about? What's the initiative doing? Well, it's trying to bring out the kitchen, you know, the, the, the people who've got those ideas. You, I see them in Dragon's Den all of the time. Mm. You know, the brilliant people who have said, I've got this problem, I'm going to work out how to solve it. Mm. Um, but a lot of people don't know where to go with that. You know, they, they get these ideas, don't know what to do with them. And this is about saying, bring them out to us, show us. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll choose, we've got three finalists um, and, uh, and the winner will get a chance to, you know, for me to mentor with them and spend time with them and hopefully, you know, get their product into, uh, into wide usage. But, it, you know, it's important. Engineering is a very level paying field. You know, it's, some, it's a very, anybody can get involved in it. And I think mm. that's, the most, that's the most important message. You know, mm. if you've got these great ideas, don't just leave them in your head. You now, know. it's not just train tunnels and ships. And I think of big infrastructure projects. I think of engineering. You're also talking about things like technology and climate change as well. Absolutely. Well, I think the most important... I mean, we are facing a big issue in terms of climate change. We're having to do things in a very different way. Doing things in a different way often means we want to do the same thing. We, we're going to have to find a less impactful way of doing it, you know, a way that impacts the planet less. Engineering's absolutely at the heart of that, you know, just re-engineering re the things that we do um, so they have less impact. So I think engineering is going to be the answer. It's going to solve the issues. Re-engineering the thinking about re-engineering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gumbled over that. <laughs> no, but it's, it, do you think the government is doing enough then? And do you think there's enough in the curriculum to ensure that people know that they can get jobs in engineering? Um, I think there's, there's two things I would say. I think that engineering, I think there probably does need to be more on the curriculum. And I think things like maths, which usually feed into engineering, there needs to be a link between what they're learning and what they can do with what they're learning. Um, I think that certainly I'd love to see more women engineers. Mm. You know, there is, it's, as I say, it's a very, very level playing field. I want to see engineers of all, you know, all shapes and sizes and um, because it, it, it is one of those areas. That, that anybody can do. So I do think that that needs to be encouraged when we're younger. You know, mm. there needs to be an expectation that you could be an engineer. Well, I'm glad you brought up uh, the woman point because I wanted to ask you this. Here on Primetime, we like to get CEOs and C-suite people in the studio and run through a list of sort of inspirational yeah. advice, if you like. And I wanted to ask you whether you care about being described as a woman in business or do you want to just be seen as a business person? I don't really mind. I mean, I am just in business. Um, it, and, and actually adding the woman, I think particularly for me, because I've owned my own business, the consumer didn't care whether I was a man or a woman or what I was, you know. They just wanted to make sure that I had a good service or a good product. So it's a bit, bit superfluous, but it, you know, it doesn't bother me. I am a woman. I am in business. You are indeed. Uh, tell us a little bit about one of the best days you've had in business. Oh, one of the best days? Mm. I get them all of the time. Mm. You know, I, it's probably tomorrow because I would today I had a lovely day in business. I, <laughs> I feel really lucky. And, and actually, it goes back to inventions and engineering. I get to work alongside really creative people all of the time. Sometimes their ideas are crazy. 
Sometimes their ideas are absolutely brilliant, but they are coming up with solutions. And I absolutely love that. You know, it's, it is invigorating, it really is invigorating. And we're showing pictures here of you on Dragon's Den, an enormously successful series. What's it been like using a TV career to kind of channel your business advice and mind through? It's been, I mean, I feel very, very lucky um, to have been able to show show my world you know to a wider audience because i love business business is business engineering invention they are the solutions you know they are the things that say here's the issue how do we get over that uh, and that's a wonderful place to be and i think i'm very proud that dragon's den has played a huge part in opening up the fact that it's actually really exciting it's mm. creative it's interesting you know you get to do amazing things and i think you know i feel very very honoured, actually, that I've been part of Dragon's Den and been able to show what business actually does to the world. Now, a difficult question to end on, but if you can identify one skill that you think makes a brilliant business person, what would that be? Um, inquisitive. Mm, good for journalists, too. Inquisitive. <laughs> yeah, just ask the questions. I have always got more questions than anybody has answers for. You know, I want to know how things work and why they work that way. And I think being keeping your eyes open, your head up, paying attention to what's going on around and being inquisitive. Stay inquisitive. We love it. Look, Deborah Meaden, we really appreciate you coming into the studio and talking to us a bit about engineering as well. Thank you. Thank you.